found us. More podcast where we want you to know God more deeply, find lasting freedom, discover your destiny and make an eternal difference. Now. Well, welcome to this week's podcast. We're happy to have you back here again for another week of just pure awesomeness. Mm. Well, uh, do you wonder why you take the time each week to listen to more podcasts? Well, here's a little help for you. If you're looking for a way to describe it, we give you a little acronym here that describes more. More stands for maximizing opportunities for right now and eternity. So stop asking why you listen. Just never forget to listen and pass it on to someone else. Uh, this message was brought to you by Strange Rentals of Northern Michigan, the makers of reusable toilet paper, monkey butlers, and Velcro Teflon. That was a little faster this time, wasn't it? That was <laughs> micro machine fast. <laughs> you ever you remember that guy that yeah. used to do that? Yeah. yeah. Got paid to talk fast. Well, here to help me with your weekly dose of more goodness, Rockathon champion five years in a row, even one year when all he had was a folding camp chair, Pastor Gary. Woo woo! All right. And my sidekick and host of the show. The man who is uh, fully addicted to salon paws, <laughs> Pastor Alex Norden. That's right. I should buy stock in that stuff. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, and, you know, I'm on the men's, though. I tell you, I'm, I'm moving around. And after Randy Don's message on Sunday, boy, I'm, I pick up my mat, and I'm praying that every day. Now. I saw you walking without your cane, and I was impressed yes. with your level of faith there. That was good. It was it was a it was a, a good day. You know, I, I had a bunch of guys praying for me at the second service and, you know, I was pinching and I felt a lot better after they prayed. Good. But I'm starting to get strength back in my legs. So nice. I try not to rely on my third leg to help me walk right. around yeah, okay. as much as possible. Uh, so, Pastor Gary, we have to always ask, you know, what's going on in Harbor Light because there's so much happening all the time. Uh, give us an update for all of us that are not in the know. Well, we have some super exciting news that uh, Harbor Lake Community Chapel has hired their new facilities director. Woo! All yes. right, yes, uh, his, the young man's name is uh, Stephen Anderson, and uh, we're super excited about him coming on board here. Um, he, we're, we're going to be introducing him on the show uh, soon. It'll be great. Um, married a couple of children, and um, we're super excited about you know his uh, arrival on the team, and he's going to just bring bring a lot of incredible leadership to this area of ministry and uh, super excited about that did i hear i mean I, maybe it's just a rumor but i heard that that he might be a pastor in his name somewhere yes uh i want to kind of hold off on that just a little bit but yes he oh, okay. has he does have an ordination you and, didn't hear that from me okay so yeah. he, he does have an ordination we're still talking about his title or what it will be but uh Steven Anderson is the new man. Um, I could tell he was pretty excited because I promised him that I would let him know if he had the job or not by five o'clock on Monday. Yeah. I waited till four fifty seven. Yeah. And I called him. And um and then I got a text from someone else at Harbor Light at five eleven that I had made a good choice in hiring him. So Oh good. <laughs> that was Pretty, pretty exciting to see 14 minutes later, it's already out there in the... So it's already out in <laughs> social media. Social yeah. media world. Uh, so that's, that's one good. thing that's going on. Super excited about that. Um, of course, I just literally walked into the studio yeah, here this just is a couple exciting. of minutes ago. This is exciting. Yeah. Um, we have a big six-door project at Harbor Light where we have to move six doors to get ready for egress and some other things for our school opening. And um, it was forecasted that we were not even going to get our... Uh, plans <laughs> looked at crazy. until the middle of September, yeah. about seven weeks out from when we sent in the paperwork. And um, I just met with the inspector moments ago, walked in, and he has given us the green light to get started on the work. That's, so, a, that's a praise God. Praise thing. Yeah. Jesus. So, that's a God moment there. Yeah, a full six weeks ahead of schedule. So That's good. Yeah. So oh, six doors. God. Now, why the heck did we have to move six doors? You know, it's quite interesting. So um, we, um, we used to have some classrooms uh, in our north wing. And uh, then we turned it into a kitchen and a storage area. Uh, and then we wanted to convert it back to classrooms. And uh, and then they said, well, you're going to have to add an egress door in, which was no problem. But they want us to, the laws and the codes have changed yeah. since we had it as a classroom before. So we have to move a set of double doors to a, the other end of the hallway. And then that set of doors is too close to the doors that are there. So we have to move those doors down. And it's just a big domino oh, effect yeah. of moving doors. So six doors have to be moved. <laughs> Good grief. Now in four weeks uh, or less, actually, now. Yeah, um, now everything's about going About two on. and a half weeks uh, before school gets started. So we'll see what we can get done. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do our best. But I did get the green light 
which is a huge blessing. So I know you've been busting your hump around here trying to get things accomplished. Yeah, and uh, we talked about Brian Budnick last week on the show, and he's a super hard worker, love his work ethic, and um, and so we've gotten a lot of projects done even since last week, and uh, we're just crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, talking about Wednesday Night Live, how did your class go? With class the, was yeah. awesome last yeah. night. We had a chance to um, look at – um, the DNA level of evolution. Okay. And um, I, I probably my best little illustration from the class is, um, you know, you can you can see maybe this snake, it's, you know, colored black and yellow. Yeah. And then you can see a lizard that's black and yellow. And maybe in your mind, you could say, all right, it grew some bumps over millions of years and, yeah. you know, it became a lizard. But if you take a look at the molecular level, at the DNA level, it is completely, absolutely impossible for mutations to happen to the DNA and for it to evolve upward. Yeah. And we had a class last night that for an hour and a half showed us the DNA situation and the impossibility of it. And so here's kind of fun. I didn't know this, but uh, DNA is a written code course. That's our, our genome is our, our code. It's in a language form. Um, It is a a language form that you can read it forward Mm -hmm. and backwards. And it makes sense both ways. Really? Yes. And, um, and it also has, uh, overlapping code, uh, spliced code. Okay. It has embedded code and it has 3d code all in the same system. Really? And one little mutation, one little error messes up multiple levels. Wow. So, so what we have going on is Darwin in 1860 says, yeah, the finches have different beaks and they're evolving. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe from a thousand foot view you could maybe buy into that right yeah. but if you get down to the super complex level it is so complex it is impossible and that was what our class was about last wow. night wow yeah, so, that sounds like it's a lot of fun it was and yeah. we had a real scientist in the crowd last night did you really um, steven anderson's wife ashley is a scientist and she was in oh, class wow. late and she was backing up everything that we were saying so it was great that's cool yeah confirmation right there yep. you know right in the audience i love it are you gonna be doing any like interesting science experiments you know <laughs> like blowing up stuff or well, that's the advanced class, so I'm not ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get Josh Ernst um, to come in and show I w- you. I will tell you that next week we're going to look at a video called The Authority of the Word of God when it yeah. comes to the creation story, so we're gonna that's going to be our topic next week. I think so. I think you're almost ready to make your own scales like that one guy that came. Yeah. Your own big giant scales. <laughs> Those giant scales. That was Just, great. You, I think you're at that level now. Okay. I think you should make sure you get that together. It was a great class. I'm really enjoying it, and it, um, our numbers were up a little bit from where we were at. I don't yeah. know if your numbers were up, too, I think. I heard rumor that your numbers were up. So there was a rumor going around that we were yeah. giving out donuts and coffee. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Some, something about trying to persuade people to come <laughs> leave my class and go to your class. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, we had a good topic last night. We were talking about the, the reality of who we are. And you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm teaching in the apologetics class is that, you know, our faith is not an agenda. It's an identity. Mm. And uh, so we're talking about what our identity was and, and what we stand on. That's a great when we concept. Live out. So, um, yeah, so we got into those conversations and, you know, of course I got my friends that show up every week, Kirk Cameron, you know, it's going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're a, my buddy. You're with the movie stars. Yeah. Did you, did you hear that? I actually wrote him to see if he'd come and speak here. No, I didn't hear that. Yeah. I wrote him an email. Okay. He, well, his office wrote me back Yeah, and said, we'd love to come to the area. Cause I gave him our website and everything and told him what's about our school. And, and they're like, yeah, normally he gets a nominal Notice the word nominal fee, right. which is relative right. to what? Right. $45,000 is a nominal fee. Nominal fee. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we're going to keep praying for your ministry. We love what you're doing for the kingdom, but that's just way out of our ballpark. $45,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know your jaw just dropped. It, yeah. it did. I'm considering becoming a nominal speaker. Yeah. I think you <laughs> get out there in the circuit, man. I mean, even if you charge like 10 grand. You could be making it pretty good. This is maybe, maybe we shouldn't talk about this, but what's the biggest honorarium you've ever received? Um, I think it was like 500 bucks. It's the biggest I've ever gotten. Well, you got more than that from Harper light. Well, the, the one time I spoke, yeah, that's what I got before I got hired in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so, that was, that was a lot. I mean, I, right. Yeah. I'm my, used to getting like 25 bucks. Okay. So, speaking. yeah. So my, my biggest honorarium, I did a, uh, a weekend deal with high schoolers mm-hmm. as a guest speaker at a conference camp thing. I don't know what it was, but 2,500 bucks. It was good. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, you know, getting ready to do your, your audio book. 
Mm -hmm. I find out that there's a whole world of people looking for people to read books. Oh, and they're willing to pay you $400 a book. Wow. To do it. That's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but maybe you got, you got bulls. I'll do this. Right. And you know, we'll tie it into the kingdom here. There we go. Reading audio books. 10% of all my sales go yeah. to missions. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, just, you know, maybe mm-hmm. I'll just do that. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> the process is so, so grueling. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Sit there and read. Any other Harbor Light news? The boys just left this morning for the Montana or the, oh, yeah. uh, the Craig Lake uh, boys camping trip. This so, is where they have to hike back in. Yeah. They miles. carry all this equipment yeah. and everything. Uh, so they left. I just uh, gave them the, the wave and the honk there as they were pulling out this morning. So they're all super fired up. All the young men are really excited, and the dads that go along. Yeah. Um, I know they're going to be doing some baptisms on the weekend. Oh, that's and of awesome. Of course, we have baptisms this weekend at Harbor Light. So um, just a really powerful weekend and a lot of things wonderful happening here at Harbor Light. Yeah, that's what, uh, when uh, Randy Don asked if anybody was going to baptize, and I saw these people standing up. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know? yeah. I met with them after the service, uh, and we had more than 10 people at the little meetings. So, really? Yeah. So it was going to be one of those uh, yep, super marathon ones. Yeah, marathon mm-hmm. Uber baptisms. Well, I think uh, we definitely we got school starting up here soon, so that's going to be happening. So more people will be back in the building. Um, other than that, I think we're we're doing pretty good. I, I do want to put a, a plug out there, okay? Because we are looking for teachers for Wednesday Night Live. Mm-hmm. So if anybody, mm-hmm. yeah, is a, has the something on your heart, something on your heart, your desire, you want to teach, let yeah. me know. Call the office. Yep. I did we'll uh, I did speak with uh, Chelsea Robertson this morning, the children's director in the foyer, and uh, it was camouflage night. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, yeah, it looked it sounded like they had a whole lot of fun. So we are still missing a couple of kids that are uh, in camo somewhere. So if you see them, <laughs> <one of them, laughs> still wandering back. in the woods somewhere. <laughs> no, actually, uh, the Critter Commander yep. made a, a guest appearance, and he was yeah. uh, hiding under a pile of leaves. Oh, was and he? he waited for the kids to come sneak him by him, and then he jumped out and just caused a great fright that's awesome it was awesome yeah yeah i saw so, him in the pictures of mike hollyfield both well mike was a a ranger and yep. a day bachelor was army yep uh so they they definitely got hands-on right like professional like, real yeah. real yeah real training yeah um i did call the critic commander um on a personal level the other day yeah. so we do have a uh, groundhog in our in our garden area and it's eating all of my wife's tomatoes oh no and there is a a death wish for that um you know, groundhog. So he better not show himself because I am locked and loaded and ready you're, to go. You're thinking you're going to take him out? Yeah. Well, we put a couple of live traps out there, but he said they're super hard to trap. Dynamite. That's what they, that's okay. what they teach yeah. you on Caddyshack. There you go. Get the dynamite mm-hmm. and throw it in the hole. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not for killing every animal, but what are you going to do? <laughs> when blowing up to your me? yard. But yeah, yeah or blowing up your yard. And yeah. I know that Lisa Kay is very particular about her vegetables. Yes. And I'm surprised she's not out there taking. Oh, let me tell you, that thing better not show because she will. You know who's a good good shot is Kim Meyer. Oh, really? Because she, I the weapons that she has looks pretty deadly. She uses it to take out squirrels and stuff. Okay, but yeah, she she's like Ma. this is the BB gun thing, right? This is the BB gun, but it's yeah. not it's not like a normal BB gun. It looks okay. like an assault rifle. Okay. Ready to go. And then the funny thing was my son was out there the day she was showing us and he brought out his uh, air gun. Yep. Air shoot. pellet gun that shoots like, salt. No, 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 no. This oh. is, this is like an automatic uh, gun that shoots the little BB, the little uh, pellets. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, you can kill a squirrel with that. Wow. But she got into that because, you know, just the feel of shooting oh. that many pellets. <laughs> nice. I said, give it, give it back to us. You know, <laughs> you're getting a look, getting a look in your eye there, Kim. Uh, nice. She, was, she wanted to take out the, the squirrels. Well, we're going to look at some of our topics today. We'll be right back. Well, in our our effort to curate some of the best stories to talk about around the barbecue and around your uh, nightly conversations together around the bonfire, uh, so we wanted to make sure you have something to kind of bring up. 
And like I've mentioned before, I've actually used some of these stories in some of my opportunities to talk with people because they're just so darn interesting. Yes. Some of them are just kind of like catch your attention, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah. Right. Uh, and for a person like me, the introvert, uh, I definitely need all the help I can get as opposed, like I said before, with Pastor Gary, who's got a bazillion stories for the right occasion every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I need all the help I can get. So this is, maybe this is more for me than anyone else. I don't know. But okay. I've heard people tell me like, you know, I actually told somebody about that story share and they were <laughs> kind of surprised by it. Uh, one of the first stories that I found on, on the weird news circuit, uh, this is coming from AP News. Um, I don't know. Have you ever heard of uh, the movie Snake on a Plane? yeah i think i've heard of that one it's an old movie but right yeah it's it's you know everybody remembers it because it was just such a weird movie like there was snakes loose on a plane right oh well, have you ever heard of a, a bear <laughs> on a plane no okay well this is a true life situation apparently a bear escaped from its crate in the cargo hold of an iraqi aircraft as it was due to depart from dubai airport leaving passengers disgruntled over this bear that was full-size bear running through it wasn't an emotional pet was, was it? not an emotional okay. pet okay it was running through the plane and uh they had to get everybody off they couldn't take off so they had to catch the bear and well praise and god it happened it. on the ground and not yeah not in the air right um but the funny thing is is that the person that was filming it with his with his camera or his phone, phone. uh basically pointed out that the bear was not really the problem the issue was that the people were so upset that they were delayed that they were causing more problems than the bear was. When they're trying to get them off the plane, they didn't want to leave because they didn't want to delay the flight. Oh, man. So, yeah. So you have a predatory animal in your plane <laughs> that's probably all hopped up on tranquilizer, doesn't know where he's at. Right. And is running through the plane, and they're just kind of like, hey, we don't really care about the bear. We want to get to where we're going just get on us time. There. Yeah. <laughs> so that was their biggest complaint. And so some of them have actually uh, contacted their airline and want their uh, money back for the, the delay in flight, which actually was just nothing more than an hour. But uh, eventually they captured the bear, put him back in his cage, and the, the plane took off. But the funny thing is that these people were ticked off because they were delayed. So we're, what's the story like? Why was there a bear in the middle of the... It's That's another right. it's another interesting story because okay. apparently in Iraq there's no laws against having ex- exotic animals okay. as pets or food. Okay. And so they think that this bear was going to some rich person's home gotcha. in Iraq so that they could have a bear to walk around. I don't know. I don't know why you'd want a bear. Or hunt it in your house. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. you're hunted or whatever. But yeah, it's just like it's it's a huge bear. Wow. Running around. And apparently this was not a full size bear, but it's big enough to where the you know, the plane was like, you know, we can't we can't do anything with this huge bear running around the plane. I don't think, I don't, I don't care what size bear it is. You're not going to be flying with a bear. Running I know, around running around the whole plane. I'm like, what are you going to do? I mean, you're just like, hey, sit down, have a drink. Was there a little sign phone? that says bears must be this small? Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. But, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. In Iraq, you can keep doing all that stuff, and people are all excited about it and they uh what was that big what was that big television show during covid about the cat the the guy that had all the lions and tigers oh uh tiger king tiger king yeah Yeah, oh now we got a bear king going on. that was that was so weird yeah i I just heard of it i never saw it okay well the guy Mm -hmm. was super scared of tigers that's the best part okay so he has all these he has his reserve for tigers which he doesn't ever want to go in the cage with unless he's got a trank gun or something that was just the whole weird twisted part of this thing okay so, yeah, it's, uh, it's I don't know, it's interesting TV. Uh, okay, so another one is that uh, China, another story about animals, China defends its zoo animals. Uh, they actually are pretty ticked right now because a zoo in eastern China is denying suggestions that some of its bears, again, might be people in costumes after photos of the animals standing that. like humans circulate online. I saw yeah. a little clip on that. Yeah. When it was standing upright, it's totally a person, but then when it moved... Yeah. It definitely looked bear like. They they're saying it's a bear, but people that are taking pictures of it and, and videoing it with their families are like, a bear doesn't normally move like that. And apparently these are smaller bears. They're kind of a red yeah. It's it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a dumb thing, but they're defending themselves. And so people try to contact them and ask them, you know, like news news organizations trying to find out if this is real or not. And they won't talk to them because they're like, We don't want to inflame the story anymore and what it is, but yeah, our bears are all real. <laughs> When have you heard a zoo ever have to say to somebody, no, our animals are real. They're not fake. This is a real thing. 
Um, well, apparently these sun bears from Malaysia are smaller than other bears and look different, but are really the real thing. And so Hong Zhu Zhu said Monday on his social media account, we have real bears. So come to the zoo. You're seeing the real animals. These aren't people <laughs> dressed up in costumes. But I'm thinking how, if you saw the size of one, right, it'd have to be a tiny person. Because they're no, when they stand up on their hind legs, they're no more than maybe four feet at the most. So you'd have to have a, a small person running around, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I'm like, Chinese people aren't the tallest people in the right, world. But so. I'm, for, you know, that's, that's it's pretty small. You know, maybe they okay. could, maybe got the smallest ones in the group. I don't know. Like, hey, today you're going to be a bear. Go out there and <laughs> run around and look like you're doing something. And you're in the rhino costume. Get over there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dave and Tom, you guys are going to be in the rhino. You're over here in the bear. <laughs> we got to keep the zoo going here. All right, so another animal story that has hit the news, which is awesome too, is that a missing goat brings a community together. This uh, community was... how this happen now? Well, okay, so basically a goat got out during a Texas rodeo and went missing for over a week in rural South Texas. Um, and people got so caught up in the story and the idea that this goat was missing that the whole town, 20,000 people, started putting up posters, missing persons, you know, posters and looking for getting on ATVs, uh, got a helicopter involved with it, uh, got uh, the police department, even the fire department involved with it, trying to find this goat. Nobody could find it. Eventually, two uh, ranchers found the goat caught in a fence, and it couldn't go anywhere. And so they they got it, and they, they brought it back to the, the Texas Rodeo, and now it's a hero, and they gave it a name. It didn't have a name before. Now they call it Willie, Willie the Goat. And so now now, the, now he's going to be holding out for a nominal fee. Oh, this, yeah, 45000 It's going to be a $45,000 <laughs> fee to come. No, this is the best part. They offered prizes, 90 prizes, to find this goat. One of them was a $5,000 uh, monetary prize. Uh, one was uh, also a life or a year long's worth of brisket, uh, fresco, and then salon services. If you found this, okay. this, this uh, goat, yeah. So eh, you know, now the runaway goat is a huge hero, and they are doing all kinds of things to celebrate that the goat was back there. Nobody even cared about this goat prior to this rodeo. So basically, it sounds like this town had nothing going for it. And this goat now just brought it back now to it's life. On yeah. the land. I'm sure they're going to have, you it's know, on the Willie, Willie Day yeah. at some point and they're going to be <laughs> having everybody celebrate a goat. Wow. Yeah. And it, you know, it's kind of I saw a picture of it. It's kind of a cute little goat, but it's it's still a goat, <laughs> right. you know. Right. Sounds like a place that critter commander would like to hang out. Yeah. To go see Willie. Mm -hmm. so uh that's it that's all i have i don't okay. know this is some good stuff i it think is. this would definitely it's very rich this is very rich you got two bear stories and a goat story right all in the same podcast i don't wow. know how you can beat that yeah i'm gonna have to really work hard next week to figure out more stuff and you covered the entire globe i did from texas all the way to china <laughs> so it's pretty good <laughs> yeah and i rock china yeah. we're yeah. everywhere right that's what you get when you when you listen to our podcast. There you go. We world, don't mess around. World news. That's right. World news with more podcasts. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hey, don't worry. More podcasts will be back in just a second. The Dam Side Inn is an historic restaurant located in Pelston, Michigan. Nestled next to the North's most scenic majesty, it offers a picturesque setting and a charming ambiance. The restaurant serves a delicious array of old country dining with its rustic charm and scenic surroundings. Making the Dam Side Inn at 6705 Woodland Road, Pelston, your next stop to make memories as a family for generations to come. The Dam Side Inn. Get rapture ready with your favorite host today, Pastor Gary and Pastor Alex Norton, as they come to you with information that you need to make it through the times coming ahead and more. I think we should change this up sometime with like a Lawrence Welk track. Okay. You know, like a one and a two, you know. A one and a two. And a Get the accordions the going. The from the finger legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, Rapture Ready News has an interesting story that we uh, uncovered, uh, which just recently came in the news. Um, apparently, China is going to be using AI in the classroom this year. Okay. 
Now, it's not as what we, we would think. I mean, when I first read the story, I thought, oh, okay, well, they're going to use it to help teach because I know that there are AI um, programs now that you can actually have like a person now, you know, talk and stuff. I don't know. Did you hear about the, it was an Episcopalian church that actually had. You told me about that. The services yes. with an AI. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a little bit different. This is actually a little bit scary because as we're, we're hearing about this from China, our school system's like, this might be a good idea. Uh, basically the intelligent classroom behavior management system is what they call it in Chinese. I don't even know how to say that in Chinese. Uh, it scans the room every 30 seconds, logging, uh, both the behavior of the students and their facial expressions. The system can identify, uh, seven moods, including happy, sad, afraid, and angry by simply an- analyzing a student's face. A camera perched atop the blackboard at the front of the classroom also tracks six types of behavior in reading, writing, hand raising, standing up, listening to the teacher, and leaning on the desk. Now, it's unclear what the ultimate goal of the technology is, but Zhuang Gachao, maybe I'm not saying that right, apologize, the school's vice principal is reported as saying the system is both helping track student attendance and assisting teachers in refining their teaching methods. That all sounds okay. This is the part that kind of gets me a little scared. While it is fair to say that the technology could be incredibly useful in helping teachers optimize their classes to maximize student engagement, the system could easily be also used to surveil students and penalize those slacking off. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all this talk, you know, we used to joke about Big Brother watching you and all these other things. This is literally Big Brother watching you it's almost like 1984 yep. playing out right in front of you where the kids are basically being watched by this ai to give data to the the teachers to let them know well at first they're saying how to teach better but really that part where it says penalize those for slacking off that makes me a little nervous because if it starts here it's going to get out everywhere oh, yeah. else oh yeah we're i would say you know being rapture ready just be ready for the return of Jesus because there's going to be more and more and more control yeah. and surveillance over every yeah. aspect of your life. Financially, travel, thought life now. Right. Right. And yeah. I mean, that's verbal, what basically what verbal, they're doing. Yeah. You know, all of these things now, school, travel, like I said, yeah, it's get ready. I think that there are some control factors coming in that we're not even thinking of yet. Right. I mean, it, it, and it, you know, it's interesting how whenever they, um, kind of approach the subject, it always starts out, right? Innocent. You know, we just, we really want to help the yeah. kids learn better. Right. This will be a great tool. Yeah. But, you know, you, you're you saying that this AI basically is not just looking at um, some of the things that, as a parent, I would say, it's kind of helpful. I mean, ba- they're looking at how the kid acts in the classroom, and they're going to be watched as to how their behavior is. Uh, to me, I was thinking about this, you know, I, the kids that, you know, go to public school and they have a profession of faith, Who's to say that the AI is going to be like, hey, you know what? That's that's hate speech, you know? Oh, yeah. They need to be penalized for that. Yeah. Or the kid picks up a Bible. Or no congregating in groups of four. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's crazy. I know that, uh, you know, in our school we have cameras, but we have a stern policy that nothing's connected to anything right. other than what we need to see in the school. Yeah. And, and the main reason is for that. We don't want exactly. outside influences checking out what's going on. Not yeah. that we're trying to hide anything, but the fact is this is the stuff that's starting to come up. Right. And we don't need, <laughs> we don't need them yeah. coming into our, our uh, camp. For sure. So something to keep an uh, eye on as you're looking at it. I mean, uh, one of the articles I read is associated with this is that some of the schools in, in America think this might be a good idea to help the classrooms because they're so... Uh, what they say is inundated with so many students and they're under uh, they're overworked and underpaid and they need help to better manage the kids. So I don't know. This may, may be something coming to our classrooms in America, but it's something to keep an eye on. I, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of scary when you think about uh, a program, a computer program that does the work of a human eye and, and does the work of human relationship and communication that always scares me. I'm just like, it, mm-hmm. like I mentioned last week, it's starting to sound like Terminator all of a sudden. Yeah. Sky, sure. Skynet's coming online. I don't know. But uh, we don't have to worry about it. You know, um, th- we know that there are going to be times of testing and and moments where we're going to have to stand up for our faith in a situation that may not seem the best for us. But at the same time, you know, Jesus says, you know what, blessed are you that do that. And so we definitely um, want to encourage our, our kids not to hide their faith, 
but to, to live out their faith in the way they, they need to and the way they should in the midst of this environment. And, you know, God's going to be there with them. He's going to support them and protect them. Absolutely. And I believe that with all my heart. I mean, uh, you know, you and I both have been in the public school system before we got into Christian school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are times where you were influenced or in the, uh, in the atmosphere where it wasn't Christian friendly. Right. And, um, yeah, I remember um, when I was in fifth grade in East Jordan, there was a teacher. I found out my dad was a pastor. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I was target, you know, everything. Oh, really? Yeah, it was bad. That's And then I started going to the Christian school in town there and then eventually came here to Harbor Light. But it was ridiculous mm -hmm. how how angry she was against God and how I was the target for all that. Right. Um, yeah. So it's unfortunate that kind of stuff happens. But, you know, God is faithful and mm -hmm. he will he will do what he needs to do. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. The more podcasts I want you to know. Got more deeply. Find lasting freedom. Discover your destiny. And make an eternal difference. You're listening to more podcasts. We are in our Harbor Light Bible Trivia. Uh, this week, we had uh, three winners get your question right out of Ephesians. That's awesome. Uh, Linda Murray, Ben Butnick, and Alan Kaberski. And uh, the question was out of Ephesians about what are the five gifts that are given to the church by Christ. Yep. And um, they found the, the pastor of Scripture. They gave us the five gifts. And so um, you guys, on Sunday, come to the swag table and grab some swag. And uh, we, we appreciate you answering that question. But I know we have so many other listeners out there. Yeah. What, you know, pull the trigger. Right. Answer some questions. It's okay. Let me read to you the answer. Oh, let Ephesians me just, here we go. Four, verse 11. Now, these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. So those are the five gifts right there. Let's talk a little bit more about what their, what their purpose is. Um, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So very good. these uh, five gifts, these leaders in the church are here to equip and um, train up people to do the work of the ministry. That's good. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah, so those are five gifts that are given to the church. Uh, obviously, see them in operation here mm -hmm. at Harbor Light. So, uh, yeah, so it's good stuff to know. Um but if you are wanting to answer the question for this week, uh, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, email it to harborlightbibletrivia at gmail.com, harborlightbibletrivia at gmail.com, all lowercase. Super simple. Mm -hmm. Send your answer. And then what I'll do is I'll send you an email back saying, hey, good job. Yeah. You did it. Right. And then yeah. come get your swag. Get your swag at the swag table. Very rarely do I ever mention it on, on air, online. Mm -hmm. um, did so. you want to talk a little bit about the missing swag at all? Yeah, apparently um, Jesus is a hot is a topic. Hot topic, yeah. yeah, or a hot <laughs> item. I guess we we uh, we had twenty four Jesuses, and we're down to like three. So, so yeah. Jesus got There's really popular. A lot of Jesuses week. out there. A lot of Jesuses out there, which is you know uh, I'm glad that you're into Jesus. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, the swag, you know, just let people know that the swag is only for those that answer the question online and and uh, and send us the email. So you know, we encourage you to, um, you know, if you see little little hands grabbing at things or whatever, uh -huh. uh, just you know, kindly say, hey, you know what, that's not for you, right? It's it's for other people. Sorry, you know, sorry about that, Pastor Alex. Well, you know, I'll tell you, it is uh, it is very. Um, tempting right when you mm -hmm. have all those cute jesus's yep sitting up there so I, I just encourage you just to you know if you see little hands going up there just let them know that these are for people that uh you know answer the question uh we're trying to really find a way that's uh, convenient for everybody to get their swag because on sunday it is extremely difficult to get everybody that even though it's three people um you know we meander around wander around and sometimes it's hard for me to track people down especially now when i'm hop along cassidy it's difficult to catch up to you right so I encourage you to go to the table and get your swag and enjoy it. Have fun with it. All so right. So this he, week's question. Here's a question for this week. Here we and go. It's based on um, what Pastor Alex is going to be speaking on this weekend coming up. And so um, what are the seven phrases 
that Jesus gives from the cross. Ooh. There are seven phrases that Jesus says from the cross um, at his crucifixion. So what are they? This is this has been preached on many, many times. Yes, this is a Good Friday special. Yeah, Good Friday special <laughs> question. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we're, we're getting ahead of Easter this year. Mm-hmm. Like quite go. a bit, yeah. <laughs> we're actually beating it before even Christmas. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you know the answer to that, those seven last phrases and words of Jesus, uh, make sure you send it to harborlightbibletrivia at gmail.com, harborlightbibletrivia at gmail.com. And, uh, well, again, I'll send you an email saying, hey, good job. Um, you know, now they can be worded in whatever translation you use. It doesn't have to necessarily be the King James Version. Right. But it's it's good. You know, I know some of us like the the King James Version of that mm-hmm. because it sounds very authoritative. But it, it, It's kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, I learned some passages of Scripture as a kid growing up out of the King James, mm-hmm. right? And then you go to relearn them or re-memorize them in other translations. Yeah. NLT, ESV, whatever they might be. And um, it's like, ah, I continue to default back. Yeah, to the the one I learned originally. So, um, I've got kind of a potpourri of Bible memory verses in my. I do that all the time, like yeah. I, I, uh, especially the one John three sixteen. You know, yeah, it's like I I remember I memorized in the King James, and then I learned it in NIV, and then LT. It's like right. I, I know Jesus loved everybody. That's basically <laughs> what we get down to is that Jesus yeah. loves you, and uh, he died for everybody. There you go. That's the crux of the verse. So, if you know the question or you know the answer to the question. Uh, last seven words or phrases of Jesus, uh, send it to harborlightbibletrivia at gmail.com, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Now, those that have not answered or you've answered before, it's okay to answer because we put your name in the golden hat yep. of possibilities, and we pick and choose for the speaker, or we also have the Toby Mac CD, which is available as well. Right, and we used to have Jesus's. Now we don't. We, so. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is missing. That's that's a that's kind of a weird thing to think about. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. You know, if you've got a Jesus, Jesus and camel. Yeah, <laughs> but there, you know, the funny thing is, if I saw somebody wearing that, I'd be like, "What the heck?" It's like a bracelet, uh-huh. but it's like the extended, you know, Jesus. Oh, so Jesus yeah. was actually a bracelet. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. And know he that. lays on your arm. Okay. He's kind of like big. He's like four or five inches long. Almost like the corsage for your wrist. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It's definitely did, that. When you when you did you go to. Did, junior senior or the prom or anything yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. did you get your your date a corsage i did yeah i did was it the upper pin on one or the wrist uh it was the pin on the, the okay. dress yeah i think i did i think i did one of each but okay. i you know i don't know why i didn't do the wrist but well yeah. the girl has to the girl has to tell you yeah you know you don't get her a wrist one when she's expecting the pin on one i don't yeah it, it's, it's it's i could it's ask her by, she's it's by she request. teaches here Oh, did she? Catherine, it was Catherine Johnson. Oh, okay. I do yeah. remember that. It took okay. her twice to... Oh, know. twice? Yeah, well, we, we dated for two years. I didn't... I guess I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. And my so you have to ask her if she got the wrist one or the pin on one. That's a good question. It is. I wonder if she remember. Well, women always remember that kind of oh, stuff, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, they got locked in. They can remember the clothes you wore, the colors, all yep. that stuff. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Although, you know, my wife and I, we've been debating for like 27 years the date of our, our wedding... Because we had a video that had one date, and I'm like, no, it's this other date. And so we you, kept You guys about don't it. know the day you got married? Well, it, I think it was kind of like we didn't want to really solve the the mystery the mystery about it because it's just fun to talk about it all the time. Okay. And so eventually I've gotten so- How far off are you the two answers? By two days. Okay. So finally, you know, I'm like, you got a genius idea. I'm like, let me look at my phone, go back to the year- of when I think it was. Right. And, and match it day. up on the day of yeah. the week. Okay. And so I was right. You were. I was right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, high five on that one. And so basically I'm like, so we've been arguing about this for so long. She's like, they must have wrong, right, wrote the wrong date on them. I'm like, yeah, duh. I mean, because if it would have been her date, it would have been like on a Thursday. We didn't get right. married on a Thursday. <laughs> okay. So anyways, so we finally uh, figured that whole mystery out. Scooby-Doo was on the scene for that there one. We appreciate that. You meddling kids. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're back in business. Well, we are. You know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to do the critter commander. I can't. I have not. We heard haven't done it. it in a long time. Yeah, I got to do a critter commander for our ID break, and we'll go into Bible talk. Deep in the darkness of night, critters and creatures are stalking your yard, your front porch, your trash cans, and even your crawl space. These pets can dig and destroy important wiring or foundational structures of your home. 
If you have stepped on a furry in the middle of the night, you know how unnerving this can be. Hey, when you start sharing meals with rodents, it's time to call for some serious help. In 2020, a crack commando was sent to prison by a military court for a crime that he didn't commit. This man promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade in the Emmett County underground. Today, still wanted by the government, he survives as their critter commander. Thank you, Myron. There isn't a skunk alive that can spray critter commander. His reflexes are super cat-like. Raccoons give me a break, they can't match his wits. He has even been known to wrestle chipmunks into full submission. So don't let your home be overrun with problem possums or even menacing moles. Call for the Critter Commander. He is on YouTube, and he's a YouTube sensation with tens of, well, views. Call Critter Commander at 231-838-8239. Did you write that number down? I did. Yeah. Because yep. you got that mole. Problem. Well, I've got him on speed dial. So. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you can just call him up and right. say, hey, mister, let's come over he here. He picked right up, too. It was did awesome. he really? Yeah. See, he's always it's almost ready like to he's go. got twenty four hour, you know, hotline for you to call. I know yeah. it's, it's awesome. I just sent him a, a video today about two prairie dogs uh, fighting on the okay the range, and people had to actually stop because they couldn't get around them. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who's kind of come out and helped me put in my food plot for deer hunting. His name's John Bailey, super mm-hmm. awesome guy, and he's got a giant tractor. I mean, talking giant, yeah, right, yeah. And he said when you run over a badger den. The, the tractor, the weight of the tractor will cave in, but he said it's so it, it will jostle you so much you'll hit your head on the side of the tractor. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was like, it's really, really intense. It's pretty deep. Then, yeah, then so the apparently thing, these yeah. badgers dig big holes. I don't know if I ever wanted to face off with a badger. I've heard they're pretty mean. Yeah, they are pretty tough. Yeah, yep. and they might take you out. Mm, I, that's I, what I've heard, yeah. Critter Commander would know how to deal with it because mm-hmm. he's, you know, arm wrestled one to the ground. So yeah, I'm pretty sure he can do that. Well, uh, last week, we had a special speaker, Pastor Randy Don, who came. Uh, and for a 64-year-old man, he's like a Pentecostal squirrel and 12 cups of coffee. I mean, he was yeah, he was, he was up there running. I mean, I, I looked at him, and I'm like, you're how old? Yeah, he, you was, know. he was getting after it, wasn't he? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was just sweating watching him. Uh, it was a great time. There was uh, healings and, and people who got saved uh, mm-hmm. in the service. Others rededicated their commitment to being life changers. Um, and so we were hoping to get Pastor Randy done here, but the, he's really super busy. Yep. Normally what we do is we have a guest speaker. We try to get him, uh, to talk to us on the podcast. And right. So he was real uh, super busy. And then we, you know, we just send our best to him and we're excited that, uh, he came hopefully to get him back. <laughs> but his main text was out of John chapter five, a uh, well-known story of the healing at the pool of Bethesda. And, um, it's interesting how he, he approached this whole subject, but he mentioned that, um, the only way that we can see life-changing power happen in the world around us uh, was to, and he gives us three points, he says, to understand that power is he who is in me, understand that Jesus gave us the authority to do greater works for the kingdom, and to know that God's power is active now, the time is coming. Um, what, what did you get from his points? I know you were taking notes like I was. Yeah, so um, I believe... Um the first two points there, you know, power and authority, of course, those go hand in hand. And um, we have a lot of believers that um, don't know about the power, the power. Mm-hmm. therefore yeah. they can't walk in the authority. Right. And um, so that was really fun for him to be able to flesh that out for us and encourage people with that. And I want to encourage you as well that uh, you have a, a power at your dispense because of Holy Spirit living inside yeah. of you, yeah, and um, and that we can um, not be victims of what the enemy has going on in the world. We don't have to be afraid, as you've already mentioned, um, and that we can exercise that authority mm-hmm. or that power with the authority that has been given to us. And so we don't have to be, you know, taking it on the chin all the time. That we have the ability to walk this thing out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact how he, he brought that around in, in using Jesus' example in that situation. But, uh, you know, the, the power that we have uh, in us is not necessarily uh, something that, like you just mentioned, should be taken for granted. The fact is that we have this power to to change our world around us, to stand in the midst of the chaos and the confusion and the sin and all that stuff. And, 
to uh, to be a light, to be salt and light in a situation, regardless of maybe how we are, uh, you know, in our physical personality. God gives us the power to stand in those situations. But the the thing that I think is interesting is to do greater works for the kingdom. Um, you know, sometimes we misread that and think, well, we can do better than Jesus, which is not the case at all. The fact is, is that uh, we're going to be able to do and continue on the work uh, beyond what Jesus had done, and we're going to do it more and more and more as the kingdom church. And I think that's something we should take to heart and say to ourselves, you know what? You know, if Jesus could do it, basically that should be our first thought, then we should be able to do it. We should be able to heal the sick and and to change our culture, be counterculture in the sense that we change what's happening around us. And I, and I think that's so, so cool. And then the, the last one is the time is coming. Uh, you know, Jesus is really kind of getting to that at that point, you know, sort of pre, uh, pre-Calvary. But after the fact, the time is here and it's now that we have the ability to do that now. It wasn't like something we have to wait for. They went in the upper room, Holy Spirit, you know, came upon them. The church began to grow. Things started happening. But that's not stopped, right? Right. It continues on. And I, and I think some, you know, some churches, unfortunately, you know, believe that that stuff happened only with the apostles. But uh, we're a church here that believe uh, the time that Jesus is talking about is happening right now with us, that we don't have to sit in the seats of thinking, well, I don't know how this is going to happen. We have been given the mantle to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me is as he set up the story, mm-hmm. um, I don't remember, he, he didn't necessarily read it, but he just told us about it. Yeah. And as I read through it, um, he did a good job of kind of saying, listen, this guy's been laying next to the pool for 38 years. You got to be pretty bad at falling into a pool. Yeah, right. That you can't get in in 38 years. Right. right yeah. it was That was kind of a fun concept that he kind of showed us. Um, he kind of acted it out a little bit, like maybe the guy isn't right up next to the pool. He's, you know, seven rows deep or something like that. Right, yeah. But after 38 years, you... It seems like you could have worked your way towards the front. And um, I kind of took that as a real encouragement for those that need a healing, those that are seeking something from the Lord, yeah. is to pull in as close as you can to the Lord. Don't be in the back row. Right, right? Yeah. Now is the time to move forward. Let's get as close to the answer as we possibly can. Let's pull in as close to the master as we, we can. So, you know, let's, let's pick up our mat and move a little closer yeah. to get what the, the Lord has for us. And uh, there are a lot of people, I think, who just like, meh, I don't deserve it. Um, I've done a lot of bad things in my past. Or, you know, why would God pick me? And then they just take the back row. It's yeah. time to get up out of the back row and let's move to the front of the pool. Well, it's kind of like what we talked about, what was it, last week about, you know, being passive. Yeah. And accepting what, what God wants us to have and mm-hmm. become super passive about it. And, you know, the, the issue is that, you know, we, we talk about um, us getting our healing, our, us having something change in our lives. Um, we can get into that mode, you know, like there's always an excuse why we didn't get there soon enough or why we weren't close enough or why we weren't where we needed to be at that moment. And, you know, honestly, there really should be nothing there to get in the way. Like what, you know, there's nothing there keeping you from it. Right. It's really you, right. You're the one that's not moving to where you need to be. You're not getting close enough. You're not, you know, seizing the opportunity and the advantages there. And, uh, you know, how many of us do that, you know, a Christian journey instead of, uh, really expecting God to do something great and, and work in our lives, we settle for second best. You know, right. wait till next year. Yeah, you had, know, like the, the guy I had a chance well. to spend some time with some people this week that are going through some tough stuff, and I just ask them, "Have you done everything possible to get to the answer you need?" Mm-hmm. Well, no. Well, let's get out of the back row and let's start moving to the yeah. front row. You know, do you do you need to memorize these scriptures? Do you need to? Go to a prayer meeting. Do you need to meet with somebody and talk about it? Whatever it might be, right? Are you doing yeah. everything possible to get to, you know, that's how we do life, right? Um, work as if it depends on you, you know, believe as if it, you know, pray as it, it, believe, it, it rests on Jesus. So yeah. it's time to get activated in whatever it is. So let's pull in, get close. And then the other thing uh, Randy Don said, he asked the question, is the same question that Jesus asked, are you ready to be healed? Yeah. Right? I think that's a mentality change that we're kind of uh, alluding to right here, you know, are you ready? And the guy wasn't necessarily ready. He, right. He's like, I can't, I got all these problems. I'm too far away. Yeah. No one will help me get in. He just, he just gave a litany of excuses. Yeah. Okay. Let's get past the excuses. Are you ready for what God's called you to? Right. Whether that be a healing, a strong marriage, a, a move in your ministry where you're going to start following the call. Are you ready for that? Right. Because if you're, if you're going to come up with a, a whole list of Excuses. You're not ready. Right. Yeah. Let's live ready. You know, let's be rapture ready. Let's be, you know, Christ calling ready. Yeah. I've done everything. I've studied. 
I've prepared. I've been mentored. I'm ready for the launch. Okay, let's live ready. It seems like an obvious question, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, what Jesus asked him was not like like a mis- mysterious question of, where you know, mm-hmm. are the stars aligned? Do you feel mm-hmm. everything? It, it's an obvious question. The question was, you know, what you've been seeking now for, what, 38 years? Right. You want to get it. Yeah. Do you want it or not, you know? And, and uh, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes people don't pull the trigger on whatever it is. Or they, like you said, make all these excuses why they can't go to the, the level where they need to be. And, you know, Jesus is always asking, hey, are you ready? Are you going to do it now? Are you going to do it now? Isn't it amazing? Let me let me read it to you. Yeah. Okay. So this is John chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 6. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool. That's excuse number one. Yeah. Okay. When the bubbles rise up, someone always gets there ahead of me. Second yeah. excuse. Yeah. Okay. And then this is what I find fascinating. He... Jesus never even gives him a chance to say yes. He's like, do you want to get well? The guy gives two excuses, and Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat, and let's walk. Yeah. You know, he, he never really came to the place where he's like, yeah, I'm ready to be healed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus yeah, just interrupted him, kind of derailed his train, because I think there were two excuses given, and I probably imagine five more were coming. And Jesus right. just cut that off. Let's stop that talk. Rise up, pick yeah. up your mat, and go home. And that, that's so that's sometimes so typical of a situation why we don't find that that healing or that that change because like you just said, you know, we keep coming up with all the limitations of why we can't get to that that point. Yes. And and so, you know, we kind of build our own walls that we can't we can't ever get over. Mm-hmm. We keep ourselves from moving forward. I mean, it's almost like that guy had an imaginary wall between him and the pool and he kept constantly creating more and more things that made it impossible for him to get there. We don't know how far he was from the pool. Maybe right. he was like right next to the thing. Maybe. Whatever it was. I mean, but it was something, right? It was always something for him. And, you know, I think as Christians, sometimes when we're looking for that victory in our lives, at some point we've got to say, listen, um, there's no more excuses. I'm going to move where God has called me to do or move in this direction. I know you've been to Israel and you've been to this pool, as mm-hmm. I have. Um, but it is interesting he says, the man himself kind of says, listen, no one, no one help, help me get into the pool. So it's not like he could just like roll over into the pool. Right. Yeah. He must be far enough away that he has to have help. Yeah. Now, you remember the location. Yeah. The pool is actually quite deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, was it always like that? I'm not too sure. But, um, you know, it says this thing was surrounded by five porches. So maybe the water level is higher than it is now. Yeah. But makes it seem like he was kind of a little distance away from the pool because no one could help him get into the pool. Mm -hmm. If he was on the last step, all you'd have to do is just roll over into it. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. That's that's, kind of interesting, right? Yeah, that he's he's far enough away from it, you know. Uh, Do you you find it interesting that that was one of his excuses is that it's somebody else is not in getting involved with my situation? Ooh, that's a really good point, isn't it? Yeah. Instead of just owning it for yourself. Right. Right. Taking responsibility for. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, it's for me, it's like uh, Jesus was defining the fact, is this important for you? Right. Right. Do you, do you want to be the victim? Do you want to be on the stretcher? I mean, is that really where your life is? You, what is this something about this that you enjoy doing? Like not walking and not, you know, being a part of your community and family, mm. you know, like what is, what's going on there? Right. I mean, that, that that to me seems like an interesting question when, like you just said, Jesus cuts them off. Like, you know, it's time you got to actually make a decision here. Yeah. Do you want to be a victim or do you want to be victorious? How do you see that playing out in today's world amongst, we'll we'll just go right with Christians or maybe even the world. Like, how do you see this playing out? This excuse stuff. Well, I think that there are a lot of people that like to be the victim and like to be on the stretcher, you know, okay. Want to be the people that there's something addictive about it, right? Mm. The fact that everybody pays attention to your your issue, your problem, um, you know, and, and it's something that you just you like. Mm-hmm. You like the attention. I don't know for whatever reason. Maybe you didn't get attention at home, whatever it is, but it becomes a limitation for you then to accept what God wants to do for you, right? Because mm-hmm. if I give it to God and God eventually takes care of the problem, then I don't have that anymore. So then, wh- what do what I do? What am I going to do? Yeah, it's all about identity again. Right, yeah, my identity is tied to me being a victim. Right, and and it's unfortunate, but we have a lot of people in our culture, even in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I mean, we talked about this. The funny thing sometimes that happens in some of the small churches, 
when they have testimony time, right? Right. And people get up and they share a testimony about how the day was, the week was, and how many problems and arthritis is kicking in and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and that that's their thing. They never, ever claim a victory. They never claim a praise report. They never get excited about what God's doing. They don't even see the positive ever. It's always about the situation. And I know um, the first and second service were, <clears throat> you know, vastly different, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, in the second service, uh, with the audience and the, the group that were there, uh, Randy Don did a really good job of saying, you are not your addiction. You yeah. are not what you've done. And he did a really good job of kind of bringing that out. And I think that's a little of what you're saying here, yeah. right? You're not the sick guy, 38 years, that can't get into the pool. That's right, not yeah. who you are. And um, I, I really felt a real um, nudge of Holy Spirit when I got up there to kind of wrap things up, yeah. that people have um, they've flip-flopped, I'm a child of the king, yeah. right, with I'm a plumber, I'm a housekeeper, I'm a, a, a victim of this, I'm a victim of that. We, we, yeah. we, we flip it, and we got to get back to the fact that I am a child of the king who happens to do plumbing, housekeeping, um, mom, grandma, whatever it might be. Yeah, That's the order it has to be. I'm a child of the king first right. who does these things and exercises the authority that Christ has given me with a power in that level. And I think that, like you just mentioned, that shift goes back to his initial three points, right? About mm-hmm. understanding the authority of power, right? So if I'm living as a kingdom citizen, then my identity never is in my circumstances or my issues that I deal with in life. It is what I am that Jesus says I am. Right. That's how what I live out. So these circumstances, situations that uh, sometimes affect us, um, they don't, like he mentioned on Sunday, don't define us. They're not who we are. They're not our label, our identity. And, and when we allow those things to take the consuming role in our thoughts and our minds and our uh, efforts, you know, in our journey, then, then we do, we, we basically have put ourselves in a stall as far as moving forward in the kingdom we, or moving on our journey because yep. we can't. You and I are probably good candidates for falling into that same exact trap. Mm-hmm. I'm a pastor, right? Right. Yeah. No, actually, I'm a child of the king. Right who happens to do pastoring. Right, yeah. Right, or preaching or helping people or whatever it might be. But sometimes we can really be tempted to flip those two around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, because, it, you know, it's a kind of a super, it's, it seems like a spiritual thing, right? It's a, I'm, I'm in a spiritual job, right? Yeah. And, and so I, I can really find myself in that identity and say, well, this is, uh, this is the same thing, which it's not. Right. Yeah, which is not. Yeah. Yeah, I remember one time I had a, a friend of mine who was a pastor, and he's like, uh, talking to me about my devotional life and he was confronting me about it. He's like, so what are you doing for devotions? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm getting ready for my sermon, getting ready yeah. for this next, uh-huh. next, uh, whatever it was. And he's like, no, 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 no. What are you doing for your devotion for your, for your own faith journey? And mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, good point. Yeah. It was a challenging, it was a challenging thing for him to bring to me. Cause I'm like, yeah, I, I'm like everybody else. I get caught up in my identity that I think it is mm-hmm. other than the real identity of who I am. Yeah. The other thing that I see happening here, and you kind of touched on it, is um, no one will help me into the water. Yeah. No, no, no one of my friends are here. Uh, everyone, you know, yeah. I'm a victim of my parents didn't do this. My parents didn't do that. My wife didn't oh, do this. Good, yeah. My husband didn't do that. My kids, yeah. my boss, my environment, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Shift, blame shift. Yeah. No one will help me get in the water. It's not my fault. Right. I'm here. I've been here. Yeah. But nobody else is helping me. Right. That's what this guy's saying. Yeah, I, that's that's a powerful thought because you know how many times does that become a part of our dialogue with God? Right? Mm-hmm. I can't I can't beat this addiction because I just don't have anybody to help me, or nobody's supporting me in prayer, or nobody's helped me through this it's tough my, situation. My parents' fault. How I was yeah. brought up. Yeah, uh, yeah. My parents were addicted, so mm-hmm. it's you know it's my issue. Uh, yeah, that's something that. Um, you know, my wife and I, we talked about this one time that one of the things in our, our family's history is a lot of divorce. Mm. And one of the things we said was, I don't care how bad it gets. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, we've we've actually talked about divorcing each other a couple of times because we just had those moments where we were like, this is not going to work. And, you know, God steps in and it's like grabs us by the sh- shirt collar and is like, listen, you know. You seem pretty compliant. I'm surprised. Well, you know, there were some times I had some heat, you know, okay. I had some I had some moments. 
but it was, uh, you know, and, and unfortunately it's usually associated with ministry frustration, right? Okay. Getting involved and you're like, mm. this is too much already. I can't handle this and that and everything else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the Lord steps in either through somebody that we, we knew or just speaking to us directly and like, you, you can't do this. You need to break this chain, mm-hmm. uh, this bondage of, of this being a part of your family's history. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one thing, you know, I've always shared with my kids, like, listen, just like your mom and I, you, you know, we didn't have a perfect marriage. We're not, we're not perfect. But at the same time, we are committed and covenant to each other. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're going to break that bondage. But I could use every excuse in the book, right? right? You know, there's a lot of divorce in my family. So it's bound to happen, right? I didn't have good examples. Mm-hmm. You know, I had people that were, you know, breaking up marriages left and right. So, pff, you yep. know, what's the big deal? Yep. But, you know, we can't allow those excuses. And I'll tell you, the devil loves to use those excuses, right? Mm-hmm. Because... The best thing the devil uses is rational thought and intellect to help you move in the right direction. And he uses things that he already knows that we're thinking about moving in that thought process. So all he does is just keep poking the bear until finally you pull the trigger and move in that direction. Mm-hmm. And and we realize that that's, that's what the devil does. But when we put it up to the mirror of God's word, we realize it's not God's best for us. Yeah. You know, you've got to, you know, make it happen, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's an addiction or divorce or whatever it is, you got to fight through it. Right. Isn't it fun that you're on a bear theme? So I am on a bear, bear theme. So yeah. Got a bear on an airplane. <laughs> a bear in a zoo that could be yeah. a human. Yeah. And we just had the bear yeah. show up at the pool of Bethesda. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was, uh, I was interested about that one part of the, the story, um, which was how the religious leaders reacted um, to what happened here. And okay. Uh, I, I was, the question was, you know, like, was Jesus giving him a command that was in violation of the law? Because one of the things he says, what is get, get your mat and get yeah, going, pick up your mat and walk. And uh, of course we realized that was uh, on a Sabbath on a Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I was doing some research on this and I realized that yes, in a way he was, but it wasn't really mosaic law. Um, they were actually using a traditional interpretation of the law mm-hmm. and taking the the wrong approach to not working on the Sabbath as their main argument, which was actually flawed because it's interesting to bring up that the, the same stringent approach that the man's healing was all about. Uh, they used it to create loopholes like crazy yeah. to not do the same. And so they would find ways to do uh, and to not comply with the same rule they were holding against this guy. And so, uh, but it's interesting, the law of Moses actually teaches that it's always better to choose life than Sabbath uh, ritual. Mm. And uh, Jesus actually confronts him in Mark chapter three, verse four, Mm -hmm. talking about this as an example that what they were saying was ridiculous. If you find your oxen stuck in a ditch, you're going to reach down, choose life and pull it out. Choose life. Yeah. And so it's just really cool to see that, you know, Jesus says that. So, you know, I think sometimes when I read that passage of scripture, I'm like, you know, they were maybe were breaking a rule, but you know, there's, there's times where, you know, God says, you know, it's, it's be- uh, cho- cho- choosing life is always the, the better thing, you yeah, know, choosing absolutely. what's, uh, absolutely what's better. Well, uh, I think, uh, it was a really good, good, uh, sermon on that Sunday. And I know that everybody was blessed. A lot by of it. people were super blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was funny because I, um, I was talking to him between services and I said, you know, I grew up as an AG kid, you uh-huh. know, and uh, he's like, oh, yeah, you know. And uh, so we were, we were talking about some of that stuff. But it's funny because we actually know some people that were in the same circles in the AG. Okay. Yeah. Just, it was yeah. just so weird. Right. Six degrees of separation, I guess, you know. He's only a couple years older than you, so that makes sense. A couple years older. <laughs> oh, my gosh. People think that I'm older than you. I mean, seriously, people actually. Yeah. And now with the cane, it's the given, right? right? They're like, <laughs> yeah. grandpa, you know, grandpa, pa. Ted calls me Pa now, you know. I was like, come on. When we did the worship on the farm, uh-huh. the bass player for the band after us, he comes up to me, he's like, it's so good to see older people still rocking and rolling. <laughs> I'm like, dude, come on. For real? I'm so sorry, buddy. I know. It was it was bad. Well, uh, do you have any closing thoughts before we 
No, nope, uh, just come back this weekend. Pastor Alex is going to be bringing the word. It's going to be a great weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to um, the weekend after that. Of course, it's the one service out in the park. That's going to be and, good. Uh, that's going to be a good time. And uh, excited about all the changes that are happening here at Harbor Light, and Harbor Light Christian School is getting ready to open up. We're going to have a fantastic year. Uh, a lot of lives uh, changed. I know that Pastor Matt had a great chance to go with the kids out to Montana, and the, our leaders are ready to take the school to the next level. Yeah. And, um, you know, Miss Chelsea's doing a super good job on the children's ministry. Very proud of her. They just had a great summer. And she wanted everyone to know and to realize that uh, the Wednesday Night Live programming for uh, young people, for the kids, are, are going to continue on. We're not going to stop once school gets going. This is oh, a year good. round uh, commitment. So she's excited about what she has planned next. And she's doing a, a great job just knocking it out of the park. And I'm a part of a super incredible team of people here at Harvard Light. And it's a privilege to be able to serve with them. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, she the kids have learned everything from you know camouflaging themselves to hide from their parents, yeah, and to feel dressed Christmas trees, right? So yeah, it's been a great summer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what they learn during the school year. Well, that's it for us on our podcast. We just want to let you know that we're always praying for you, and we're glad that you're listening. But let somebody else know about the podcast and uh, tell them, hey, you know what? If you're looking for a little more in your life, come check out this podcast. We'll talk to you later. We want you to know. Find, discover, change with us. More podcast ending transmission. Now. Good one.